I've been waiting for this night all year long. This location, these conditions, at this time of year. This exact night. Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard and tonight I'm going to photograph a nebula in space using a $200 camera lens. So I'm pretty far off the beaten path right now. There's no people that live pretty anywhere near where I am right now. And I looked down the path that I drove down when I got here uh, and there was this dark figure sitting in the middle of the grass. And uh, I could tell it was an animal and I got the binoculars out and it was just this black cat sitting and staring at me. And uh, as I walked towards him, I wanted to see if he was friendly. He just ran off, but I was like, that's kind of creepy and definitely a first. I'm at one of my favorite places in the world. This is the location where it all began, actually. I took my very first photo of the Lagoon Nebula through a telescope back in 2013, and tonight I'm gonna do it again. My first deep sky photo of the Lagoon Nebula was taken with a $1,000 telescope and a DSLR camera. This time around, I'm going to use one of the cheapest camera lenses on the market, and that is the Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. I won't use a fancy dedicated astronomy camera or even an astro modified DSLR camera. What I'm using tonight is an entry level Canon EOS Rebel T7 DSLR camera, completely stock with no filters inside or out. I don't think most people realize that you can capture incredible images of nebulae in space using an ordinary DSLR camera and kit lens. But there is one key piece of astrophotography equipment needed for a great shot of a nebula, and it is not a telescope. The key to capturing a great photo of a nebula in space using a camera and lens is a star tracker. It's essentially a smaller version of a motorized equatorial telescope mount like the bigger ones you've seen me use on this channel before. This will allow me to capture long exposure images of nebulae in space at longer focal lengths, in the case of this lens, to a maximum of 300 millimeters. If you don't have a star tracker like this, you can still take pictures of bright nebulae like the one I'm shooting tonight with a stationary tripod, but your exposures will have to be much shorter because the stars will begin to trail after only a few seconds. When you compensate for the rotation of the Earth, all of a sudden exposure time isn't an issue anymore. You're free to experiment with less aggressive ISO settings, a lower f-stop to sharpen things up, and choose an exposure length that's appropriate for the brightness of your deep sky object and your tracker's capabilities. That way you don't have to crank the ISO on your camera settings and you're you're not asking too much out of a little star tracker. The subject of my attention tonight is of course the stunningly beautiful Lagoon Nebula in Sagittarius. The Lagoon Nebula is big, it is bright, and it is right next door to the equally as amazing Trifid Nebula. If you're new to astrophotography, you may want to stick to the brighter targets, at least to begin with, while you get your system ironed out. Brighter deep sky nebulae like this make framing, focusing, and even sometimes image processing a lot easier. I'm under Bortle scale class 5 skies right now, which is going to lead to a better picture of this nebula. But the Lagoon Nebula is so bright, it's a great target to try for from the city, even under light polluted skies. Oh God, the bugs are bad. Bugs are bad. Actually, the hardest part about photographing this nebula from the Northern Hemisphere is getting a nice low horizon to the south because it sits very low in Sagittarius. Not so bad in South Florida, but a little tougher here in Ontario, Canada. Here's a look at the complete setup. It's a radian carbon fiber tripod. On top of that is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i Star Tracker a camera ball head on top with the Canon T7 Rebel DSLR and the Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter lens. This is a cheap kit lens. I in fact did get this lens as a part of a kit with the Canon Rebel T7 
And if you remember my video earlier this year, the Kit Lens Challenged, I was pleasantly surprised with the performance of this budget camera lens. You can find it brand new for $200 online. As you can probably tell, this is a very lightweight setup, which is great for this type of astrophotography. You want to get to a dark sky area if possible, and you want to shoot during around the new moon phase for the best results on nebulae projects. Something else to consider is that you'll want to use some sort of remote timer or remote shutter release cable. This is the one I use here. It's just a cheap Amazon model. And this will allow you to take longer exposure images that are longer than 30 seconds, but also it allows you to set a sequence of images to run automatically. Another thing to consider with a setup like this is having some sort of dew prevention or dew control because as it gets colder at night, you might see that water, your condensation starts to build up on your camera lens, quickly ending your imaging session. So some sort of dew heater band with a controller to run it or one of those USB type style ones. Another thing is a focusing mask, a batten off mask will really help you sharpen up those stars by giving you a focusing aid for that. So there's plenty of sizes of batten off masks available for any kind of lens that you may have. Okay, it's starting to get darker out now, which means the North Star Polaris will appear any minute now, and then I can polar align this star tracker, and then I'll accurately be spinning with the rotation of the Earth, and essentially freeze deep sky objects like the Lagoon Nebula in the night sky. I'll take several image exposures of about two minutes long each at ISO 1600. Those are the camera settings I'll be using. I'll manually focus the camera on a bright star close to the Lagoon Nebula and then pan over to it manually on the star tracker and line it up. I'll take lots of test exposures to make sure it's framed up nicely and it's nice and sharp. I'll collect as many of these two minute long exposures of the Lagoon Nebula tracked as I can. And then in the image processing phase of things, I will stack all of that data together to improve the signal to noise ratio and process hopefully a really great image. Now the optics on this lens are budget, but based on my experience using this lens in the past, it's nothing that can't be easily overcome in the image processing stage with a few tweaks. This is me, standing in a shed at 1 a.m. on a Tuesday, all alone while everyone else is asleep. You'd think that astrophotography is a lonely hobby, but I didn't feel alone. In fact, I felt more connected to everything. Maybe humans are supposed to have a deep connection with the night sky. In a strange way, when you look up, you see yourself you see the ones you love. You feel at peace with a bigger timeline and where you fit within it. And guess what? The deeper you look, the better it gets. <laughs>